Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 1980 Commonwealth Bank Cup Final. And to you through the public address system here at Leichhardt, and of course to you at home who've just joined us on television through Network 10 Sports, may we take this opportunity of introducing individually the players from tonight's high school final, the competing schools, and commencing first of all with Holy Cross College from Ryde, muscle down there in the tunnel, and introducing at fullback number one, Stephen Coyle. Number two, from the left wing, Darren McInerney. Number three, from the centre, Mark Cullermain. Also from the centre, number four, Paul Perkins. On their right flank, number five, John Newey. Number six, the 5'8", Murray Butt. At halfback, Eddie Basil. Number eight, their lock forward, Andrew Cox. From the second row, number nine, Danny Regan. His partner, number 10, John Foster. Prop number 11, Anthony Garcia. The hooker and skipper, and on five points in the 2SM scholarship, Benny Elias. And number 13, their prop, Paul Clark. The reserves for Holy Cross College, Darren Horrigan, number 14, 15 is David Stewart, 16 John Tedesco, and 17 Stephen Raven. Ladies and gentlemen, you have there the Holy Cross College ride side. And now we take the opportunity of introducing from St Gregory's College, Campbelltown, number one, their fullback on, on six points in the scholarship, Anthony Field. Number two, Craig Thompson. Number three, their center, Michael Potter. The other center in combination, number four, Bruce Miller. Their right flanker, number five, is David Green. At number six, five, eight, Warren Dunn. Number seven, and their skipper on nine points in the scholarship, Ivan Henjak. Lock forward, number eight, Alf Davis. Number nine in the second row, Michael Creeley. Number ten, their partner, John Foster. Number eleven, David Quinn. Their hooker, number twelve, Jared McHugh. Number thirteen, David O'Brien. And the reserves for St Gregory's, number fourteen, Chris O'Rourke. Fifteen, Mark Ledwidge. Sixteen, Chris Byrne and 17, Wayne Sullivan. So there you have them out there on centre field for tonight's 1980 Commonwealth Bank Cup final. The stage set for some pretty memorable moments to remember and to be seen through the east coast of Australia on Network 10 Sports. Well, good evening once again and from our favourite theatre of football, Leichhardt Oval, we welcome you to the inaugural final of the Commonwealth Bank Cup. And it's here where the finest high school sides from Queensland and New South Wales have gathered to contest the most coveted TV trophy in high school football. And for 20 weeks, let me tell you, St Gregory's College Campbelltown and Holy Cross College Ride, the finalists, have churned through one hectic workout after another and honing their technique and building up their stamina required for the most exacting physical workout and that is a final. Tonight, the critics tell me that they send out St Gregory's College Campbelltown as a prohibited favourite because of their slashing wins of 24 to nil against Bombardary, 28 to six against Christian Brothers Manly, but Holy Cross College Ride, who had to eat humble pie last year, are on the war path. They won't hear of defeat. So tonight is a reenactment, actually, of last year's final between Campbelltown and Ride, but will it be as dramatic when Ryde lost it in the last minute of play. That we have to wait to see. But let me tell you one thing, that tonight's finale will be something else, something special. Well now, one of Australia's most respected feature sports writers, Herald and Sun Herald, Alan Clarkson, rejoins our statistician Ray O'Donnell and yours truly for tonight's final. So welcome back Thank for the much. sixth final. Yes. Consecutive one at that too. That's right. Yes, what would uh, you do without one? 
Well, I'd be very low. I'd be here anyhow because this is the sort of football you just can't miss. It's uh, superb football and if this match tonight is half as good as it was last year, it's going to be a great game of football and I'm sure it will be because they're two superb teams. Alan, briefly, your tip. Well, Holy Cross, they have uh, nine of their team back from last year and they've got five that can play again next year. So if they don't win it this year, they're going to win it next year. All right then. I think it'll be a very, very tight, close tussle. And uh, what a sight we have here, what an atmosphere and what colour. And what a game we'll have commencing after these words. There it is, Leichhardt Oval, looking a pretty lively ground, even allowing for a little touch of rain, a lot of bite in it. We hope for a pacey final. Referee is Barry Bradstock whistling the match away. St Gregory's getting first sniff of the ball. Mammoth support, of course, here for both sides because they're so immensely popular uh, with the followers. St Gregory's running right to left of your screen in sky blue and maroon. Holy Cross defending the goal line to the left. And she's underway. And big prop David McQuinn playing it. There's the release back to Anthony Field, putting it downfield. Over there, John Newey tidying up proceedings for Holy Cross. And the chase is collecting nicely. Midway between the quarter and halfway in Holy Cross's territory. Off for a charge, Stephen Cole copping a nice old uh, tackle in double tandem. That's Garcia taking two steps forward before he's collected by Davis and Quinn. Just short of their own side at halfway, there is Elias clearing and taking it nicely in position, Anthony Field. A good stretch up field, midway between his quarter and halfway. Campbelltown with it. Davis going sideways and collected easily there, picked off by Anthony Garcia. This is Henjack. Now it's with Potter. Dropped just short of his own side of halfway and a good tackle by Murray, but keeping up this short side, running into them strongly, Stephen Ryan. And collected there by Garcia. And Jack with Dunn through the hands now, going to Miller, slipping a nice oh. one. Field has split them, beautiful work, Campbelltown. Oh, that was great stuff, Alan Clarkson. Oh, superb. Superb. Um, I'd, ad I'd advise the viewers to keep their eye on, on Henjack, the little halfback from Campbelltown. His organisation is just superb around there. A little trap in centre field by Paul Clark. Alan, uh, in the 2SM award for the player of the year, the half of you just uh, mentioned, Ivan Henjack and uh, Eddie Basil, do you agree that their specific performances here tonight will determine the result of this match? I'm sure it will. Um, and uh, I throw in, of course, Benny Elias too. Benny is such a, a super worker around the rucks. Uh, and, and a ball winner too, of course, which is going to be terribly important. All right. Going for a trot, David O'Brien. Not very far, though. He's another valued Griggs performer. The big prop. Now it's Henjack. Just holding up the pass there and trying to split them. They have to get up and play the ball just outside their quarter. Jared McHugh getting it through. Henjack with Davis going for a strong run. Ryan. And he's written into the ground just on Holy Cross's quarter. They're applying the pressure. Campbelltown to the quick trot as McHugh shines with his deft ball distribution quite apart from his sneaky runs back here on the quarter Dunn holding on to it, doing a juggling act and getting out of one, two tackles up through the middle of the ruck, looking for support, finds it and it's Davis sending a nice pass over there as a Thompson David Green, and keep your eyes on him because uh, uh, he's a boy who can motor a real fleet-footed scoring machine he's scored three tries and kicked 13 goals in the past three games Yes, he's a very dangerous man, and this is a very vital scrum too, John. Well, it's been Campbelltown certainly applying the pressure, and it's been uh, Holy Cross called on for much defence, and they haven't flinched as they've been hounding their quarter. There's the run around, the doubling up, oh. and there it goes, and it's put the ground by Miller, but it's picked up by Field going for the truck, and it was David Green. But for the knock-on referee, Bradstock has recall play midway between the goal line and quarter, in Holy Cross's territory, three and a half minutes gone, the score nil all. Centre field, the scrum to go down. Just holding up play. Since back in March, this uh, Holy Cross ride side has given plenty of a lion-hearted performance. They're expected to do that in the opening minutes, and they have too, as they win this ball. And this is Basil, a sneaky halfback through the one tackle but gains a very precious eight metres for his side.
and strong run from Holy Cross. And that was Murray Butt. Keeping to the left, and they're up within the five, encroaching that five, four of them, and the penalty, the first one of the night, going to Holy Cross. And it's Benny Elias, the 2SM scholarship winner of last year, representative of the Australian schoolboys of last year, going for the line and finding it just inside Campbelltown's portion of halfway. Benny, I understand, is back at school again next year, uh, John. That's right, doing his high school certificate in 1981. Super Andrew little, Cox. Super little footballer. He is indeed. Paul Clark showing his weight and his size and his power and his determination. Number 13. Elias showing the ball, slight of hand stuff, getting it away to uh, Basil. This is Butt. But slicing up to almost the quarter. Good cover there from Warren Dunn. But Basil keeps them going and look at them applying the pressure now. Danny Regan, the big second rower, his tackles a punishment and so too as he's running. Now they spread the ball. Elias giving it to Butt and advances off him. Campbelltown are in possession. And it's Michael Keeley. Diving back for it, McHugh. Now Holy Cross standing up that straight line of de defence and they've trapped him at the base of the ruck. Moving up very smartly, almost sprinting in defence fashion. Davis trying to thread his way through, gaining about five metres. Now it's Henjack. Skirting on the outskirts of the ruck was uh, David Quinn, but some good tackling there and it came from Paul Clark. A little bit of misunderstanding as it scooped out of the air. Probably little, David O'Brien. Probably a little bit of tension there among the boys too. It's a highly emotional experience at the moment. And a beautiful tip from Anthony Field, finding touch 10 metres inside Holy Cross's portion of halfway. Well, Holy Cross have ripped through uh, many a defence with some powerhouse performances to uh, end up like Wests, I suppose you could say, with a great amount of respect. An unfashionable side, but certainly a commanding one, Alan. Oh, very much so. Very much so. They, uh, everything they do, these both teams, uh, has that little touch of class about it. Penalty without even the ball going in, and it's feet across Benny Elias, Barry Bradstock, at least um, Jared McHugh, and Barry Bradstock awards the next penalty again to Holy Cross College Ride. Campbelltown gave one of their most dynamic displays of the season and they crushed Christian Brothers Manly last week, 28 to 8 in last week's semi. It was just an exhibition of power play and backing up where they rattled up six superb tries. I don't know whether you agree with me, Alan, but I think their pattern is the very essence of rugby league. It they is. Uh, maintain that they'll do it again tonight. Yes, well, the opposition tonight has, of course, uh, got a lot of class about it too and, a lot, and quite a bit of experience in this type of football. Very solid, very compact Holy Cross as Basil releases it to Butt. Butt goes to create the opening to give it out straight away to Perkins. But it was shut doors. Cox gives a nice one, unexpected though by Clark. Came off his rib cage, and that's where the scrum will go down for the knock-on, just on the quarter. And the score nil all after eight minutes of play in the first Commonwealth Bank Cup final, 1980. Penjack feeding. And it's a sky blue ball. Here he goes, looking for that opening, but Cox is there. Good cover, full-on cover. And Butt was to collect him as well, his opposite. Penjack getting up rather wearily. Davis trying to run from dummy half. Andrew Cox there again. Elias had him covered as well. Coming up this left side, going for a quick run, coming in and covering well was Darren McInerney. And it was Field who carries play up to just almost halfway, or at least Quinn. Now it's with Dunn who knocks it on. And I don't think they've held the ball for sixes yet, Alan. No, they haven't. Um, as I said, I think uh, a little bit of nerves probably, but uh, they'll settle down, these fellas. Holy Cross coming in very severely, putting them off their stride. Mm. Oh, their defence has been outstanding. Last week they were coming forward and putting Sting in the situation from the whistle off. They were walking tall, as uh, Warren Dunn thought he would that time before he's collected by Eddie Basil. See, this defence of... Um, of Holy Cross is superb at the moment, not allowing them a yard forward. No place for the faint-hearted there, John. No way in the world. Michael Keeley, who's a hard runner and uh, pretty rugged, is a bit of a schema too, was trapped, as is David O'Brien. In fact, Holy Cross is doing to St Gregory's what they did 
to Christian oh. Brothers Manly last week. And there's the little flick over the top. All oh, the bounce, but saved beautifully. Mark Cullinane back there. As was John Newey. But it was beautifully placed by Henjack. Came through like the little terrier that he is. 30 metres out from their goal line. This is Perkins. Paul Perkins, an Australian schoolboy trialist last year. Not seen the best of him this year, but uh, glimpses of it tonight. Holly Cross to halfway. And it's Anthony Garcia uh, pressing forward again. Now with Basil. Elias is out there. This is Murray Butt giving it to Elias on the double. And he's through one, two. Support on the left. Moran and goal jumpers. Picks up beautifully. Oh, here he goes. It's a new end looking on the inside for support. But a glorious tackle. Coned in Anthony Fields. Superb. Oh, he tidied him up beautifully. But what sensational football from Holly Cross ride. Alan Clarkson. That's uh, the man we were talking about before, Benny Elias. In that movement twice then. Gave the ball perfectly. But what a magnificent tackle, as you said, John. And now the pressure's right on Griggs. And it's Basil with Murray Butt and chiming in from the left flank. He can't unwind it around. He was collected and squeezed. Now it's back to Danny Regan going for the line. All St. Gregory's. This is where you'll have to line it up. They're swarming like bees. Holy Cross. Elias with Basil. Outside foil. This is Perkins going himself for the line through. Yes. The first try by drive. First blood. Perkins claims the try. But all deserving of Cross's performance. Are they sharp tonight? They lead 3-0 in the cup final. Alan Clarkson as we recap. Oh, what a magnificent try. Uh, they put the pressure on. And it was just a beautiful bit of work here. You're watching me just slides through there, straight through the gap. Great stuff, Paul yeah. Perkins. And he had Mark Cullinan on the outside. He had his winger, Darren McInerney, or John Newey as well. But he didn't need them. And as I said earlier tonight, we've not seen the best of him this year, but that was Perkins, a strong performer, and has the muscular credentials to match his work as well. So the first points, 3-0, Holy Cross College leading. But prior to that, we saw some superb play from Benny Elias, all from just short of his own side of halfway, dummying, stepping. Um, you know, you must admire the swiss swiftness of his thought and the execution execution of the deed that follows. Yes, he's um, he's an outstanding young footballer. He was your award winner last year, and thoroughly deserved to be. Um, he he's probably one of the one of the most um, dynamic young players I think that I've seen around. Oh, he's there, oh. Benny Elias! What a cracker! He had the chance and he soared so beautifully, almost from touch. It's 5-0. Holy Cross ride leading St. Gregory's. This St. Gregory is one of the proudest dynasties in all of high school sport. They are the MCS champions this year. They have defeated St. Gregory's twice. High praise indeed. Uh, ride is winning again. And what's more, they tell me winning the Holy Cross way. Going for the prestigious double the MCS competition and the 1980 Commonwealth Bank Cup. There's a crisscross. This is stuff from Campbelltown as O'Brien, another valued performance from uh, St. Gregory's Thunders forward. Henchek spots the opening. Oh, nearly scooted on three. You've got to watch this fella. They are. <laughs> Done getting it to Bruce Miller, lining up on the inside field, coming through on the outside potter, but he was squeezed over because Eddie Basil was there to collect him. McHugh. Their defence is so good, John. Oh, Moving yes. up so quickly. Warren Dunn trapped and looked three in there to collect him. And end of tackle count coming up as McHugh serves it out straight away to Henjack on the inside. Finding feel, looking for that split up the centre of the ruck. But it's well covered and 30 metres out from Ride's goal line. Gregory is on the attack, the scrum to take place. And one of the intriguing uh, statistics of the match, John, is that after 20 minutes play, there have been only three penalties. Holy Cross will leave them 2-1 at this stage. And Ride, supercharged tonight, accurate passing, invincible running at the moment. It's real power stuff. Eddie Basil. Serving. And referee Bradstock recalls play. Eddie Basil has uh, seven points up until tonight. In the 2SM uh, scholarship, a new man to shut down. He can flip into action at a moment's notice, and this could be it. As he goes for the break, looking for Andrew Cox backing up. Can't unload. And it's uh, Warren Dunn, the defender. 
This is Danny Regan. It's a hard runner. Problem That's one money. way. Yeah, real problem. Unenviable side as he comes forward, let me tell you. Benny Elias there to back up a dummy half. Foster plays out to Basil on the outside. Waiting for it was Butt. And he is well and truly rounded up by an avalanche of Gregory's uh, performers, namely um, Potter was one of them and McHugh was the other. But they're going left with Elias with that little dummy. They're not fooled this time. Try to outweep them. Not this time, Benny Boy. Gets up and plays. Basil now with it. Has Cox going with him. Nearly trundles on through. And uh, for the end of six, a scrum 10 metres short of halfway in Gregory's territory. The lock forward, uh, Davis, from uh, Gregory, is doing some very good defence. It was his tackle then that yes. stopped Basil. Oh, he's an uncompromising defender. He, he's more than a useful runner too, but uh, his favourite situation is devouring oncoming forwards. This is Stephen Cole, Coyle. With the Holy Cross ball and taking it up now, Garcia looking for Cox on the outside. And for the knock on. We'll have another scrum. Yes, that young Alf Davis uh, is done up like a like a trotter tonight, strapped up like I can't begin to tell you, and uh, he's a boy from Papua New Guinea. And a lovely young man with it. And watch him now detach himself from the base and as it comes to oh. Perkins, putting the ball through, all oh, into open space, going back as Thompson, he has the speed to save though. From out of his own goal line, oh, run around, did it nicely past McInerney, but only took about another five metres, but watch this fella go if he, if he has an opening, he's like a lightning bolt. He's just the, the perfect finisher. Playing it. And this is David O'Brien sideways for Campbelltown. And diving literally into the tackle, Stephen Ryan. His game gains polish every match. Very robust in defence, and he's a robust runner as well. Campbelltown grafting their way away from their goal line. Done well just up to their quarter now. Henjack with a little sh show of hand, as if to kick, as if to pass on the inside, uh, but well and truly swamped uh, by the Holy Cross defenders, and they snuffing out. I think the Holy Cross boys might have seen him do that one before. It is. It's almost at the, at the back of him, his two hands holding it. I don't know how he retains possession, but he somehow does. But it's, uh, it's magical stuff with his hands. It must be like great big shovels. He never lets it go. All right, it's a cross ball. Benny Elias has won. It's released by uh, Eddie Basil to Murray Butt. And that's looking eight. for the run around, but he takes the tackle. That's 8-4 the scrums now, John, to uh, Holy Cross. And look at Regan again. Yes, they've spent a lot of time down in uh, St Gregory's and when Greg's get, get the ball they've got to do something a little whoops. A Clark little pushing thing. forward. Now Elias going for the drop. There Benny Boy has put another one over. It's 6-0 Holy Cross ride leading St Gregory's in the 1980 Commonwealth Bank Cup final and we have six minutes before half time I wonder if he can sing i mean he can do everything else <laughs> oh i don't know because he was in the australian schoolboys team wasn't he uh, john yes. went overseas and got a lot of experience with that that tour yes i don't think he'd stop this black benny elias with a hockey stick <laughs> fair digger Look at that, uh, picked up, <laughs> scooped up beautifully. He's the Cadillac of football, is this boy. Ten metres short of his own side of halfway. And it's Garcia slipping a nice pass. Regan, look at him, tear away. Back up from um, the coilers of Basil. He plays it. Now it's Garcia again. Take, he's doing a lot of work tonight. The two props are doing good stuff. They're big, strong fellows. My word. Is there no rest with Regan coming out of the ball? Now it's Elias with that oh. dummy. Oh, he's through again, looking for backup. Gets it from Basil. Can't unload. But wasn't it beautiful watching them in concert? They, he knew exactly what he was about to do, Basil. There's a lovely pass out from uh, to, out to Newey. And he's picked off just on Campbelltown's quarter. But it's Holy Cross College ride launching themselves through a series of dazzling manoeuvres as if the cup was their personal property, Alan. Yes, they play, they play. I, uh, I think they think this is their year. 
They don't believe that uh, a team can win it twice in a row. Well, I'll tell you about that in just a moment, as it's a Campbelltown ball, and Henjack is uh, scooting up to his quarter. And uh, coming in from the right flank, David Green, and his legs are whipped from under him. And now this is David O'Brien charging onwards for Campbelltown. Midway between the quarter and halfway, his own territory. With Henjack now, Dunn has it for Campbelltown. Field is there linking beautifully, or actually Miller. And Miller gets out of the one. Oh, lovely around the corner, Potter. Look at Thompson on the inside. Look on the inside. Oh, what do you do? He had Thompson unmarked. And he must have been singing out, and Potter held on to it. He gives a nice pass there to Michael Keeley, uh, does Henjack. But, um, oh, a, gone, a try gone begging as Henjack weaving and getting it out to Quinn. Now if he can get it out. But they don't, and the scrum to go down. But that was tragedy. Oh, yes, that was a, that was a try that went begging. I don't think he, he, he didn't look. I think he in, thought he could get around the fullback, which was uh, football suicide. Craig Thompson. Coming up on the inside, he moved up beautifully and just waiting for that inside pass. Here we go, dear. So it's again a ride ball and Basil, I think, could have given it to Perkins then because they had three up and as against one. And the lone winger was Craig Thompson, but it's Perkins running and hipping his way into the Davis tackle just outside his quarter. Scrum position is starting to weigh very heavily in this match, of course, uh, John. Nine five now to Holy Cross, and that's a, a lot of possession providing they keep it. Right, well, here is Elias, a dummy half. Oh, gives a beautiful pass to Coyle, at least to um, uh, Newey running onto the ball. And John Foster takes the tackle. Ten metres short of his own side of halfway. Basil with Elias. Here he goes with that little delicate kick. But again, just this time a little too much plum hood. Out on the fall and a scrum to go down midway between the quarter and halfway. It is 6-0 in favour of Ryde three minutes before half-time in the 1980 Commonwealth Bank Cup final. With a Basil serve. And a Campbelltown win. And Henjack getting it to Dunn, doubling. Oh, this could be dangerous. There is Miller. Now he's got Potter on the outside. Takes it nicely. But all oh, the cover was there. Full-on cover. I came across and got him and saved. Cullinane lined him up as well. Oh, picked up. Oh, it's a mishap there, but brought on back for the knock-on was Mark Cullen, and otherwise he was away. Yes, I think St. Greg's are probably uh, they're a little frustrated now. They 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 pull, pull their best shots. They're getting uh, bowled over by this magnificent ride defence. Oh yes, they can't disturb the, the you know the composure, and they can't get any compensation any other way, Alan, at the moment. No. Right, Penjack. Campbelltown. Oh. He is, he's like an exuberant <laughs> puppy, that fella. But he gets the ball. This is Warren Dunn. Momentarily has to stop and juggle. And uh, whilst he's doing that, uh, coming through and halting him was Danny Regan. Now Henjack with Miller. Oh, sends up a lovely pass. It's Anthony Field trying to run around. Gives it on the inside. And it's a bad pass. Uncharacteristic of Anthony Field. Davis was the backup, trailing him all the way. Oh, Campbelltown can do no right at the moment. Well, as Ride very quickly pounce on the ball and they have it. And from dummy half, it's Coyle. Bringing play up to his quarter. And Elias giving it to Garcia or uh, Paul Clark. And he comes forward for the Marona goals. And now it's Foster on this side. And uh, wrapped up by uh, David O'Brien and claimed also by McHugh. He reminds me so much, young Elias, of, um, of Yat Leng. The way that he organises the attack from the dummy half. What a super dummy half he is. Yes. Yes, he's, um, he's hooking dominance, his fluid ball work, his football brain. He kicks goals, line kicks, virtually calls the shots and has certainly been running the show tonight. I know, you know... As uh, Henjack gets it, the halftime hooter has sung out, or has blown out, and that was intentionally forward from Field to Thompson. As no doubt you sick, sat, uh, as you were transfixed to your picture there, you saw that. And the penalty goes to Holy Cross Ride. 
but uh, Benny Elias, uh, fa uh, a lot of attention has been focused on Ben. He's been pounded on a scale that befits his skill, but they can't blot him out. That's the half-time hooter. Holy Cross ride, six leads and Gregory's nil. Half-time score in the 1980 Commonwealth Bank Cup. Well, it's half-time here in the 1980 Commonwealth Bank Cup. We've had an abundance of excitement in the first half with lost tries, a magnificent try scored by Holy Cross College Ride. And I thought at the start of play they were very composed and they started well and very positively and they really took it to St Gregory. So at half-time, Gregory's, you notice, came off the field a little slower and more thoughtfully than when they started the match. Alan, I just feel that St Gregory's have lost their way a little, but I'm just wondering, can they take hold of that second half and come back? Well, after watching it last year, it's never over until that final siren, of course. Um, six points to nil at this stage, though, is a very, very handy lead, and I think that they are playing so superbly, Holy Cross, that they're going to be terribly hard to beat. St Gregory's will have to play a lot better than they're playing now. Uh, they will have to take their chances. They've had two chances to score in that first half and miss them. And yeah. you can't afford to make one single mistake in, uh, in football of this type. I'm very impressed with the way Gregory's are playing, and of course, with the way Benny Elias, we've spoken about him quite a bit, but he is a magnificent young footballer. Mm. Superb. It's a beautifully controlled, so they have great control of the ball. Yes, they have. They're, they're, they're doing everything so well. Um, St. Gregory's, I think they've taken the, uh, the tackle count to six on one occasion. They're dropping the ball a little bit. They're, they're not playing as well as they normally do, but they're not being allowed to play as well as they normally do because of this super defence that's coming from Holy Cross. Well, they say that matches are won in the forwards, and I must say that uh, Holy Cross tonight have been superb. They're two big props taking it up. Great, uh, great runners in uh, in Regan and Foster, Cox. Yes. Well, five of the forwards I think played in the final last year, and that experience plus the experience they've had, uh, they've picked up again this year. And Benny, of course, had his trip overseas with the Australian schoolboys team, and that's all helped, I think. And you know, they're a very, very good pack of forwards, and they've set their sights on two things or three things virtually this year. And one, of course, was the Commonwealth Bank Cup, which is the the prestige of of all the schoolboy football. And then the state mm. knockout, they're trying for that, and they've won the, already won the MSC, so mm. they're giving it a, they're giving it they're the giving good it a shot. Nudge, mate. They're giving <laughs> it a big nudge. Um, Alan, uh, just very, very briefly, uh, seeing we have our 2SM scholarship to be handed out tonight, uh, some of the boys that are outstanding at the present time. Oh, well, you, you, look through <coughs> them, you look through the boys that have come from here, and I think the one that really stands out is Peter Sterling from, uh, yeah. from Parramatta. How well he is doing with the Parramatta team, he's... Uh, uh, well, he's like the Henjek. He, he's an organiser. He's a great organiser. He's uh, playing so magnificent, so magnificently now around the scrum base. Uh, his organisation of the Parramatta attack is just, just super. And of course, and uh, the launching pad was this Commonwealth Bank Cup. Mm. Well, we'll soon know in 30 minutes from now who the 2SM scholarship uh, winner will be. But um, that's the half-time score. Holy Cross College ride leading St Gregory's College, Campbelltown by six points to nil. Are they just 30 minutes away from getting a place in history of being the first Bank Cup winners of the 80s? We'll soon know that after we take this breather and then resume. Sunday. And so Holy Cross College Ride and St Gregory's College Campbelltown are about to put together the final chapter of this Commonwealth Bank Cup for 1980. They turn for the second term and if you've just joined us at home, let me tell you that Ride are leading Campbelltown by six points to nil. In this second half, Holy Cross Ride running in maroon and gold and running from the right hand side of your screen. Gregory's of course in their sky blue and maroon. And again they're taking up where they left off. First of all with a big run from Andrew Cox. And now it is Paul, no John Foster on his quarter. Elias getting out very smartly to Perkins and really slice through there. Just outside of his own quarter. Holy Cross with the ball and it's uh, Garcia making some waves and it's Basil and he was trapped that time by Ryan here's a lovely chance here Regan but he was boxed in uh, it was John Newey the winger and who was the try scorer in the 14 to 5 win over Acacia Ridge uh, so a scrum to go down end of <clears throat> um, the lock forward. Oh, lock forward Alf Davis oh, mm. what a tragic manner in which to leave the field uh, particularly in a cup final at any time, but certainly tonight. And he's turned in a superb performance. 
this young boy, as I said, from Papua New Guinea and uh, more, more than a useful player, as is this man, Ed Basil. Well, Chris O'Rourke is on there now. All right, from dummy half, um, Murray Butt is trapped. And this is Danny Regan making headway again through the ruck. In stirring fashion, too, I might mention. Elias Garcia skirting the ruck. And a couple struck for Campbelltown that time. Running onto the ball nicely. Ride, they're doing it splendidly at the moment in the opening minutes of the second half. Chris yep. O'Rourke was to block him off at the centre of the ruck. And now it is Clark wheeling it out to Coyle is up there in the line trying to link and pass it to Perkins. But that's the end of six, midway between the quarter and halfway. Campbelltown's territory, that's where the scrum is. They're prepared to take the tackle. They're slightly ahead in the scrums and they're in Gregory's territory. So they're, um, they're pretty safe at this stage. Current leaders in the 2SM scholarship, Ivan Henjak, number seven from Gregory's as the penalty goes their way. Um, now he's on nine points, Eddie Basil from Ride, and he is number seven out there, and he is appropriately enough on seven points. And Anthony Field, who is number one from the St. Gregory side at fullback, he is on six points. The winner obviously will come from one of these players from 2SM, who incidentally, their parachutists will be making their spectacular drop on Leichhardt Oval between the end of this match tonight and the kickoff of the two cup and uh, just another bit of evidence of great support from uh, my company radio 2SM of this competition in addition to their player of the year award it's a marvelous thing for a young man a scholarship of that that nature 3,000 whoops last year's scholarship winner Benny Elias out there wearing jumper number 12 and uh, accomplishing that tackle it's O'Rourke on the run around and oh mm. gee there was some misunderstanding there as a sort of a, a scissors was on mm. uh, between Field and O'Rourke and it didn't come off now this is Basil scooting and has the pace he accelerates into top gear oh great tackle Potter picked him off beautifully midway between the quarter and halfway but it's a pretty super run from Eddie Basil up on that uh, very narrow right side is uh, Benny Elias no, it was Darren McInerney. And uh, charging forward is Paul Clark, bossing his way upfield. The younger brother of young Craig Clark, the skipper of Balmain's under-23s, and what a great centre he was for Holy Cross ride. And now a magnificent lock forward. One of the um, discoveries of 1980 is um, Craig Clark and his brother Paul wearing jumper number 13 for Holy Cross ride. Now, uh, a touch judge is in to make a report. And Barry Bradstock uh, looking around. We have one who's called in. And uh, Murray Butt is also the player from Holy Cross Ride. And uh, it's Anthony Field being spoken to by referee Bradstock. And apparently these two fellows did not show the form of true friendship a few moments ago. Slide but all, <laughs> all is under control. Underway again. Five minutes gone, ride lead 6-0 in this Commonwealth Cup final. And mm. it's a penalty and not feeding correctly. Gary Bradstock having a word with Eddie Basil, showing him how it should be done. And Ed says, I know, deep down in my heart, I know. <laughs> but I just tried to get away with it, boss. Now, number 15 is on, Mark Ledwidge, for uh, Warren Dunn. Warren Dunn is off. The young man who played 5'8", number 6, for St. Gregory's in the first half. Oh, there's a nice break by Stephen Ryan. Looks for support, gets it in McHugh. And he took it beautifully. Oh, this is where uh, St. Gregory's now. Spinning that ball. And it goes and loose. Oh, some ragged ball from St. Gregory's tonight. Gee whiz. They're just trying out a little bit too hard, I think. Yeah. Uh, John trying to do the impossible and rather than settling it down. And uh, Ride, when they're in possession, have shown little charity to uh, St. Gregory's, too. They've left them in splinters at times, but um, you've got to respect the way that uh, Gregory is battling here at the moment. So it's an Eddie Basil feed. They need to try very quickly, but they... 
Oh. Oh, look at him weave, and he gives it to Perkins now. That I thought was incorrect. Cullinane and Perkins could have taken that nicely. They had three up. So, uh, trapped a dummy half it was Paul Perkins. Elias with the dummy and straight through the middle. Up he goes. Benny Elias and gaining a magnificent 20 metres. All the boys playing out there. This is Garcia up through the middle, having a great game. Anthony Garcia pressing forward with some great runs. Some real telling sorties they are too, I want to tell you. And there's a nice pass that they're double sandwiched. And John Newey was there and Ledgewidge was there. The cue. Foster threading to Elias. Picked up Coil up on the line. And the end of six. Yes, well, they, uh, as I keep on saying, St. Gregory's need a, uh, a try very quickly there. The match is, well, it's still got 22 minutes to go, but, and he's the man that can do it. Anthony Field. But what, what about that defence? They thought that blind side trap was on, but oh boy, did right cover. Now David Green. Has a nice turn of speed if he can get free. And not only is a winger, he's Mr. Super Kick as well. Now, Stephen Ryan tries to release David Green and he makes headway of some 10 metres before Eddie Basil winds him up. Releasing it, Ledgewidge. Uh, and there's a penalty because there's uh, Perkins, there's Cullinane, Foster all up within the five. So Theo comes up, no waste of time, looks for the line. There's his favourite right boot and finds it just a couple of metres short of the quarter. Now St. Greg's can put on a little bit of pressure if they, can, if they can hold possession. There's the run around from McHugh and gives it out now to Quinn, trying to break the line, trying to wheel it around, he's lost it. The idea was right, the intention was right of around the corner pass to back up. Oh no, he's possession. Ledgewidge. And hit by um, Danny Regan. Now they're over there. York. Chris O'Rourke. Now, Ledwidge, Ryan, Keeley, Quinn, Green. Oh, and stayed and like in. a good winger. Stayed hey, in. Hey, top what marks. Beautiful bit of work there. Quinn, Keeley now, Henjack with the ball. But there's no place to go with the door shuts. Three of them, Foster was there. So too was Clark. So too was Coyle. There's, oh, the thinking of Elias. Saves a certain try. Now it's Ryan to graft their way away from the goal line. First it was Coyle. Now it's Perkins. This time it's Newey. And Elias comes up a dummy hand. Scoops it out. Cullinane going for the split. Oh, Nelly through too. Only a shoulder tackle by Stephen Ryan, who's having a super game, I might mention. This is Elias, getting it out to Newey. He can unleash it again. And up there is Garcia. And that's the end of six, just outside the quarter. The scrum to go down, and the score 6-0. Favour of Ryan, ten minutes gone, second half. Another very vital scrum, this one. Young Ryan, of course, um, doesn't tackle with quite the ferocity that his father did, but he's a very good young footballer. Of course, Alan is referring to the great Kevin Ryan as Miller makes the break. Perkins over, but Miller will be in. There's the equaliser. All the exuberant supporters of St. Gregory sing, what a try. And he turns around to the faithful, and this is a 5-3. Campbelltown have come back. Look at Henjack. Wringing his wrists, saying, come on, we can do it. There's Henjack. There is the pass. And out it goes. And this is Miller going past Perkins now. Colomay is watching his opposite fodder. And it's the speed of Bruce Miller. A tough campaigner. It's 6-3. And uh, ride lead Gregory's. Alan um, Clarkson. Oh, and nothing could have been needed more than that try. It's, it's just put the match right in back into the melting pot again. Uh, ride seemed very, very safe. But that, as you so graphically described that try, and it was a superb try, a great pass. 
and gave Miller the chance. And Miller has certainly has the speed to be able to capitalise on any chance that he gets. Well, I tell you what, he has every football quality needed to put him high on the most valued player list. Oh, yes. Yes, he's got all the qualities, as you say. He and Potter chopped up uh, Manly last week in the centres, but they haven't had the opportunity tonight. Perkins and Cullinane have been onto them, and that was just one break. And it was a beautiful cutout by Perkins. So, David Green, the fleet-footed scoring machine. Three tries, 13 goals in the past three games. So, here he is lining it up. Mr. Superkick. Little wide on the quarter. His right boot. What a cannon left boot. And you wouldn't read about it. Flagged away, so the score remains in the second half. After 11 minutes of play, Holy Cross ride leading St Gregory's 6-3. After full time tonight, the uh, winners will be climbing the stairs to the presentation area in the grandstand. They'll be receiving the Commonwealth Bank Cup trophy from Max Dodd, a, a great mate of ours, the advertising manager for the bank and he will be assisted in the individual trophies by the executive director of the New South Wales Rugby League, Kevin Humphreys. And following the presentation of those trophies, I'll be announcing the voting from tonight's match, which will lead to the 2SM $3,000 Tertiary Education Scholarship Player of the Year, Danny Regan. He did it again, young Elias. Rake the ball back when Sir Gregory's are playing him. That's not nice. Murray Button. And Never he's... misses an opportunity, the boy, does he? No. Holy Cross being parceled up now, 30 metres out from Gregory's goal line. Elias. He was just about to do that complete pirouette. But they weren't sold the dummy this time. Regan. Perkins. Coyle is up there. But, of course, Newey was boxed in and he couldn't unload. Scrum just outside Campbelltown's quarter. Holy Cross coached by John O'Brien, assisted by Kevin Smyre, the great name of the past. Always look ambitious, always chirpy in their work, always that's a tremendous commitment. At the moment, everything they do is war, and everything Campbelltown is doing at the moment is very workmanlike as they come back into this game. Chris O'Rourke, and over the top, Garcia. McHugh, Henjack working this right side, Ryan. Oh, gee, that was a long one. Oh, Eli Elias is there, out of one, giving it now. Foster breaking, denting the line. 30 metres out from Campbelltown's goal line. Danny Regan, a dummy half. That's their biggest fault, uh, don't you think, John? They're trying to do that a little bit too much. It's Eddie Basil now getting that drop ball off Cox's shoulder. And Elias again is in line. A dummy half straight away to Garcia. He's checked by Keeley and Ledgewich. Coming up there, Paul Clark. And this is David Quinn who hones in on him. Elias. Not the view just as kicking that we know uh, tonight. On a couple of occasions now, it's been out on the full. And so a scrum again, just outside the quarter. They can't penetrate this uh, Campbelltown defence at the moment. It's uh, without blemish. Mm, it is. Well, it was, it was a very valuable scrum then. So they can put the pressure back on now. But to play it. Coyle scooping it out. Newey joining the line. Uh, but he's um, taken by Potter. Now Basil going for that big cut up the centre. Gets it out. It's a scoop ball picked up over on the other side by McInerney. Mm. And he's turned it over. It's Campbelltown with it. The Sky Blues running. Out it comes. Miller is there. He's got picked up beautifully by Green. This is Henjack up to halfway. Oh, top tackle. Oh, great. Perkins. Tackle. Great tackle. Oh, did he hone in on his quarry. Paul Perkins scored a beautiful try in the first half and came in to deliver a beautiful creamer uh, right on uh, David Green. Uh, Henjack. Yes, it, uh, it, it was a tackle that had to be made. He's such a, a devastating player, young Henjack, and what a great tackle. Fifteen minutes gone, ride leading Campbelltown 6-3. Eddie Basil now to serve. 
And it's a Campbelltown ball with Ledgewidge giving it to Green. Who's oh, got and he split them and put the glasses down. David Green is over. Oh, that was David Green. That makes it. Eight points to six. Is that the cup final for 1980? Listen to the Gregory supporters. Here is the replay. To Ledgewidge, he sidles in, takes the two tackles, and it was Green who came through and trundled forward. And over the quarter, there he is, with backup from Anthony Field, of all people. And it's over to make it 8-6. Alan Clarkson. Well, uh, it, hopefully it'll be 8-6 when, if, he, if he can kick that... Uh... Of course, 6-5. I do get carried away. I can't begin to <laughs> if if he can uh, put this one over. But uh, uh, what a super try! And uh, well, I, I must admit, I thought St Gregory's were were just about down and out there when they they trail six 0 at half time. But uh, now they're right back into it. They could take the lead here. And uh, are we going to see a little bit of history with the a team winning the competition for the fir uh, for on successive years for the first ever time? Has never been done before. Never fact, been done before. On two previous occasions, the runners-up of the previous year have taken out the Premiership the following year. And was that going to be Holy Cross's privilege this year? And as Alan said, St Gregory's College, Campbelltown, if they win this cup, will be the first in our six years of history to do it. Blacktown, Ashcroft, Fairfield have tried it in successive years. None have done it. Fairfield have won the cup twice in a period of four years. David Green. And there is May, sweet sight for that in a final. David Green, with that sigh of release as his head went right back onto his shoulders, took a gulp of air, running back to take up his place, and the score now, St Gregory's Campbelltown, leading Holy Cross College ride 8-5 have we a dramatic final 8-6 8-6 I need new glasses Alan <laughs> Chris O'Rourke this is Stephen Ryan oh a bit of life now on the boys they have snapped a life <laughs> as they did early in the season Chris O'Rourke 10 metres short of his own side of halfway with their tails up, back to field, runs around and delivers it downfield. Coyle cleans up nicely. Oh, does a oh, lovely dart up to halfway. Oh, he's through. Oh, what a magnificent run. That he was in a good space and he split them. This is John Newey now with Regan straight away to Basil. Out wide, but out of one slips one man. And O'Rourke is there to collect him, 30 metres out from Gregory's goal line. Cox coming the left, switching back on the inside. Still 30 metres out. O'Rourke was the tackler. Basil through hard and fast. John Newey. Cullinane. That's a line mark up. Basil turning on over, and it's David Green with the ball for Campbelltown. Elias has just come off uh, injured. He's just getting a little bit of treatment. He'll be back on in about two seconds, I'd say. Right. Getting a bit of treatment there, as you see on screen. Benny Elias uh, receiving treatment from the uh, trainer down here on the sideline. He's going back to take up his position now. And we also have a Gregory's boy down receiving some attention. And it was uh, David Green. So Gregory's now leading H6. David O'Brien trying to scatter the defence. McHugh. And he's put away by Paul Clark. Field to clear. Good kick. Coyle. Back to the quarter. Look at the chases. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and he... Yeah. <laughs> buried under an avalanche. I can't look at the up. Of sky blues, yes. Oh, they beat them tough in ride, mate. <laughs> that was John Newey nearly going ten fathoms under. What a game. As you said earlier, not for the light-hearted. No. Now Elias. 
trying to puncture that line. But away, this time not losing the ball and up to halfway. Now it's Elias, fainting as if to kick. Gets it to Basil, oh lovely stuff. The young halfback, this is Perkins. He's got him on the inside. Oh, he went to go on the inside and of course the pass going astray. But Basil is there, tiptoeing and just keeping his snow out of the touch. But marvellous work oh. from uh, Ed Basil too. I can see uh, the blood pressure starting to build up like last year. <laughs> Nine minutes to go before full time. What a great game of football. Penalty, Campbelltown. Yeah. Well, I don't suppose I can blame him having a go, but uh, it's enabled uh, Gregory's, of course, to get out of a, what could have been a tight situation. Uh, some Gregory's now back into this match. Peter Mulholland and brother Silverius will be delighted with this. They've salted their team this year with a very consistent game plan. Their big forwards taking... Um, downfield before unloading to their brilliant scrum based era which was uh, Henjack and Dunn now Ledwidge is in there in the second half and setting up their outside supports to get away simple plans but beautifully executed but they're finding their um, opposition tonight in Holy Cross College ride crawling David O'Brien McHugh to Henjack straight away to Ledwidge gives a little oh. pass Ryan support on the left he can't unload it though but the idea was great and it was true and it was there Henjack from dummy half now trying to link up and he calls his man they're really applying the pressure now Henjack out to McHugh field is there oh balancing circus act and taken it who was there to save for Holy Cross <laughs> Benny Elias John Newey now I doing a settler. I think he's twins. No one can get around him like that, I don't think. No one oh, no. Good tackle by young Ryan again. Now that was Basil. Getting it out to Cullinane. Veering back on the infield. Channel. Just outside his quarter. Seven minutes to go. They trail two points. Basil. Giving it out to Regan. Head straight. Bad pass though. Poor Newey. Green has it. And valuable possession turned up mm. to Gregory's. O'Brien runs into oh. the wall. With Henjack, O'Rourke. Defence just falling away a little as they're making uh, headway. Ledgewidge on the inside looking for field, but he was well and truly wrapped up. Healy over the quarter and again on the inside channel was Anthony Field Henjack straight away to O'Rourke slipping one tackle gives it out nicely this is Ryan lining up David Green for the corner and wiped out midway between the goal line and quarter a scrum to go down we have five and a half minutes remaining and Gregory's lead Holy Cross 8-6 Alan Clarkson oh that uh, you know, Rourke, he's done very well since he's been on. Very nice. well, not, you know, a couple of nice passes there. So too is um, uh, Ledgewich, just so yes. he supports. Yeah. Sliding in, taking a couple of tackles and unloading it. Right. This is O'Rourke. Oh, David O'Brien knocking on. And we'll scrum it once more between the goal line and quarter midway. There it is, a Campbelltown ball. Ledgewidge driven back in. McHugh and O'Rourke with that little step. But blotted out. Now Henjack. Straight away to Ledgewidge. Miller again looking down. Field is there. A pass that was knocked back, but oh, were they in? Potter was on the outside. Thompson was backing him. And uh, it was Nelly Goodnight Ride. 
Oh, that was a uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful passing. All I have at the present time is an obsession for scoring. St. Gregory's doing everything but at the moment. But it's a great attack with the defence giving hoops. Henjack nearly through. Ivor Thompson. Yes! Henjack. Oh, wait till you wait. Have you look at that when you when we come on back? And that try alone was worth paying your TV licence. Is that that's the death knell? Let me tell you, that's the death knell. <laughs> that was Ivan Henjack going to the left. You'll see it here. Look at this. Going wide with a little dummy, floating it over. Craig coming through on the burst like a Formula One on the freeway. Look at him. Whack. And down she goes. Oh, what a winger. But what a halfback. Ivan Henjack. Alan Clarkson, it's 11-6. Yes, yes, and, it's, and they've done it. They've become the first team, or they will become the first team in the history of the competition to win it two years in a row. And while well, you've got to congratulate them, they've just been a mar it's just been a marvellous effort. The I way they kept at it, uh, that's the thing that impressed me. Yes, I... Uh, I... Um, I thought they were down and out at half at, at half time uh, because uh, I thought Holy Cross Ride were too disciplined, too united, too coordinated. Right. But the turning point, I think, has been the fact that they won that St Gregory's have won the second half scrum seven two, and with that amount of possession, that's enabled them to get themselves going, get themselves motivated. Now we mentioned that Ivan Henjack, number seven, their skipper for St Gregory's College, uh, Campbelltown, um, he has that ability to have some beautiful plays. And I know that he's one of the finest touch players in the game. And this is David Green. And he's muffed that one. But uh, it's 11-6. And we have two minutes to go in this 1980 Commonwealth Bank Cup final. Could it be that uh, Holy Cross at St Gregory's College win it for the first time in history two years in a row? A smashing performance in any case. They've come back in the second half. A school side of intense personal pride and great loyalty. Yes, and uh, also the, the possession, I think, was just the, the real turning point, uh, John. And great assistance. They've been in camp for five days, Alan. They've had great assistance from people like George Paponis. Steve Morton have been up there giving them hints. Yes. And Dave Irvine has done a fantastic job with their spent training. Oh, yes. Yeah. But you've got to hand it to, yeah, um, that's right, yeah. to all the coaches, Peter Mulholland and Brother Silverius mm. for St Gregory's, and for Holy Cross, John O'Brien, Kevin Smythe. So we're going, we're going to have it again. I have my promoter, Colin McClellan, behind me, and if it's 11 all, is it a count back of penalties? So Elias is 10 metres out with Foster a dummy half, straight away to Andrew Cox, threading on his knees, 10 metres out. Holy Cross now in the last minute of play, pressing. It's Murray Butt going for a crash through the Campbelltown wall. It's Elias, a dummy half. Oh, threading, one step, Whoops. two, in front of the jaws of the goal mouth, five metres out. They're out here on the left, and they swing it out, Basil. Long pass, it's Andrew Cox in, oh yes! A try for Holy Cross. Oh, the skills of um, Basil, the greatness and the power of Holy Cross and crack at stuff. Oh, it's 11-9. So, Alan Clarkson, uh, <laughs> with a conversion to come from touch. Oh, it's, it's a repeat of last year. There it is. If you remember last year, the um, I think St Gregory's got it in the last minute of play. Now, well, of course, it could, if young Benny can put this over and... Uh, I can't see any reason why, you know, it's only out on the sideline. You know, I don't see why he wouldn't keep put it over. <laughs> well, there is a count back on tries. Uh, three to St Gregory's. They win. Better explain this a little better. Because I'm keeping my eyes peeled and transfixed on this picture. And we had drama in these closing stages. And the oh. pack ranks of supporters have been competing with their chants and their screams and their cheers. But what will happen if he collects this one? Right. Benny Elias, and he spread it wide, it's 11-9, and seconds to go, 
That's it. That's it. That's it for the first time in history as they're besieged by uh, their um, reserves from the re reserve banks. They've piled out onto the ground to hug and affectionately grab their players that have done it for the first time in history. St. Gregory's College, Campbelltown have defeated St. Gregory's 11-9, but more than that, the first side in history to win the cup in successive years. Well, I've, uh, I say it every year, it, it's, it's a magnificent exhibition of football right through this series, the Commonwealth Bank series, but particularly the final when you see two class teams like this battle it out and finish only a couple of points from each other. A magnificent night. Well, just repeating, St. Gregory's College, Campbelltown have defeated Holy Cross Ride by 11 points to nine. Work 10 throughout the east coast of Australia. We're back here live through the public address system. At Leichhardt Oval, the 1980 Commonwealth Bank champions up the stairs to receive the Commonwealth Bank Cup. $4,000 worth of national Panasonic equipment. There's Ivan Henjak, the skipper, holding it up to the faithful. And what a reception he's getting to. Presented by Mr. Max Dodd, uh, the advertising manager of the Commonwealth Bank. And, of course, their individual medallions now from Kevin Humphreys, executive director of the New South Wales Rugby League. Well, they've created history, ladies and gentlemen, because that's the second successive year that any school has won the Cup. And they've won the inaugural Commonwealth Bank Cup. They gave us a 100% commitment after a tremendous struggle with Holy Cross. A supreme moment in high school football for these fellows. Ivan Henjak, of course, has led them up the ramp. The warmth of the crowd, of course, we have here at Leichhardt. Max Dodd having a few words with each of the players, receiving their medallion now from uh, Kevin Humphreys. A game that was played, I might mention, in the best possible manner and the greatest of spirit. And closing the first chapter of the Commonwealth Bank Cup, a very exciting and certainly a very expansive year. And uh, there is the coach, Brother Silveris, in association with Peter Mulholland, uh, receiving their medallions from Kevin Humphreys. Brother Silverius on your screen now. Max Dodd from the Commonwealth Bank. Admiring, standing back and admiring these uh, great players. And don't forget, when they descend the stairs, give this side a great send-off because their victory was so terribly well-deserved. Marvellous moments to remember here tonight. We had them from, uh, also from Holy Cross as the runners-up, but they're in contention again for 1981. But what a sight. Uh, St Gregory's Campbelltown in their blaze of glory. 1980 Commonwealth Bank Cup winners. Each lad should feel very pleased and satisfied with himself. The, the team uh, descended the stairs, the first Commonwealth Bank Cup winners of the 80s. So, there it is. Every one of them made a tremendous, significant contribution to uh, this final tonight and a, a fitting reception to the Cup winners. Alan Clarkson? Oh, uh, what a, another great match. I, I keep on using that word great. But I, I, that's the only word that really describes this sort of football. I, to me, it's a pleasure to watch. Uh, it's classic football in the, that it's played in the spirit that football should be played in. And when you think that Holy Cross led 6-0, and I thought, well, poor Olsen Greggs, they're gone. But they don't give up. They just kept on coming. And the fact that they did win those scrums, those 7-2 in the second half, I think was probably the most vital and the, the, the turning point of the whole match. Well, Alan, um, the presentation has been, of course, completed, but tonight's voting, insofar as this match is concerned, in the 2SM award of $3,000 for a scholarship, one point went to young Stephen Wright, who had a superb game, number 10 for Campbelltown. The two points went to Ivan Henjak, the young halfback for Campbelltown and their skipper, and the three points went to Benny Elias, the hooker skipper for Holy Cross College. So that means that the 1980 Radio 2SM Player of the Year, following tonight's allocation of points and uh, receiving that magnificent $3,000 tertiary education scholarship from 2SM, goes to Ivan Henjak. And there is St Gregory's holding a high the Commonwealth Bank Cup. Our congratulations to, to Ivan, because I know of no other fellow who has been so dedicated in his determination to lead his side to victory and certainly to um, certainly earn himself a prominent spot in history. The 1980 Commonwealth Bank Cup. Well, our immense thanks, of course, to you, Alan, for oh, being back with you. us for the sixth successive year. It's a privilege to be here, John. Thank you. And our immense thanks to the Commonwealth Bank Cup, who have been phenomenal sponsors during 1980, 
and such an expansive uh, situation for them and of course high school football throughout New South Wales and Queensland. Uh, finally, my sincere thanks to a great production team here at Channel 10. Thank you, fellas, right throughout the year. Uh, to uh, some great promoters, Colin McClellan and Associates, uh, to an ever-present and ever-reliable statistician, Ray O'Donnell. And in conclusion, may I say, I'm John Brennan, and together throughout the year, we've been here for the Commonwealth Bank in 1980 and hopefully in 1981.